The Lone Ranger. There they are. All right, let's get them. Nothing but rustle out cattle. You Canucks are all alike. We do not rustle. We buy those cattle. Mama! Oh, I did my son. <laughs> but who? Those men from the Slauson Ranch, they come. They say your father steals their cattle. And, and they... <laughs> But Papa paid for those cattle. They are ours. <laughs> no, no, please, my son. No. I will kill those men. Katie, you must not. You must not. You are but a boy. They will murder you. Then what will become of me? There are some things a man must do. Vandalia has always been a peaceful town, Kimisemi. Well, it's not peaceful now, Tonham. One murder after another. Horse stealing, cattle rustling. Why a change, Kimisemi? Because government opened land for homesteaders? I don't know, Tonham. They're blaming the trouble on the Canucks. The people who come from Canada? Yes, it's odd. In Canada, they were religious, law-abiding people. Why them change? Because they're new here in this country? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Look, Kimasem. Stop it, son. Now, why were you trying to drag out those men? Because they are murderers. They kill my father, steal our cattle. Well, that may be true. But once you've taken the law into your own hands, you're a criminal too. You'll ruin your life. Let the law punish them. Yankee law. I spit on your Yankee law. It is not for Mama and me. We are Canucks. Suppose we ride into Vandalia, have a talk with Marshal Dillon. He's a fine peace officer and a friend of mine. So, you are a friend of Marshal Dillon's. That's why you stop me. That's why you wear a mask. You are one of them! Stop it, son. I think we'd better take you home and have a talk with your mother. Merci, monsieur. Merci, I thank you for saving my son. It is enough I lose my husband, but if I lose Etienne also... And you say your husband bought those cattle? Oui, monsieur. Well, in that case, you must have a bill of sale to prove it. None of them had any proof. None? The other men who were murdered and called rustlers. But these families do say they bought the cattle. We are honest people, monsieur. We do not steal. We will trouble them no more. We will go back to Canada at once. Maman, what about Papa Baptiste? Papa Baptiste? Papa Baptiste is rich from Lombard. He gave us money, all of us, to come to this country to make a French settlement. We, oui. we had a letter this morning. Papa Baptiste is on his way here now. Well, may I see that letter? Oui, monsieur. Papa Baptiste arrives tomorrow. Oui, monsieur. Oh, I think you should stay, ma'am. One day won't make any difference. And it could mean saving everything you've worked for. He is right, Maman. Then you trust these men? Oui. Très bien. We will wait for Papa Baptiste.
Runaway wagon. Yeah. tragedy. This man was the Canuck's last hope for happiness in our country. When him not come, Canuck's all quit and go back to Canada. Maybe they won't go back. I have a plan, Tonto. Mr. Schlosshead, I have come to you because you are a friend of my people. Well, that's right. What can I do for you, uh, Mr. Uh, Pierre? Pierre Baptiste. The one called Papa Baptiste? Uh, oui, monsieur. That is uh, my nickname. Monsieur, I wish to buy the cattle. Buy cattle? Oui, monsieur. For the families of Canucks who were killed as wrathless. I see. Uh, monsieur, there is just one thing. My people, they are proud. They will not accept the charity. Uh-huh. Well, now, maybe I can help you there. Suppose we have my men deliver the cattle to the Canucks ranches as, uh, well, let's say gifts. Gifts of uh, sympathetic American friends. C'est magnifique. Bien, monsieur. Bien. Voila. Now, monsieur, if you will give Pierre the bill of sale. Anything for a friend. You know, you're the kind of a man it's a pleasure to do business with. <laughs> Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Merci, merci beaucoup. There, that should do it. All legal and proper. Perfection, monsieur. I'll have my men cut out and deliver the cattle right away. Au revoir. Dan, I want to... Something is wrong, monsieur? You are sick? No, there's nothing wrong. I'm all right. Ah, très bien. Then I will be going. There is much to do. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur. What's wrong with you? Well, it ain't every day you can speak to a dead man. What? I swear that's the Canuck I killed on the Vandalia Road. <laughs> well, you must have missed, and the old coot played possum. Good thing, too. But we wouldn't have this. Hey, where'd you get it? Sold him some cattle for the Canuck families. Cattle that will never have to leave the ranch. We're supposed to deliver them. That's a good one, that is. And the next time you shoot Papa Baptiste, make sure he's dead. Don't worry, I will. Voila! Now remember, if you abandon the homestead before five years, you lose the house and all improvements, too. Agreed, agreed. Monsieur, there is just one thing. What's that? I have bought the cattle. You record for Frisier the bill of sale, oui? Sure thing. Is this a joke or what? Monsieur, what you mean? This paper, it's blank. Blank? Oh, monsieur, Pierre is a stupid fellow. He makes a big mistake. I bring the wrong papier. Pierre, be right back. Be right back. Au revoir. Everything go all right, Kim Sami? I think so, Tunnel. As Papa Batiste would say, we are ready to bait the trap. I need your help. Time I won't miss. I didn't shoot. Me shoot him. You what for? Canuck. Me hate Canuck. You sure he's dead? You too. 
Don't I say I miss? Oh, put that away. You know, I know a man who can use you if you want a job. Not Canuck? No. Man I work for, Dan Slauson. Me plenty poor. Could use job. Good. What matter? Nothing, I guess. All of a sudden, it struck me that I've seen you somewhere before. man's body beside the road. Been shot. Now that's the man who was in my office yesterday. Filed for a homestead. You're under arrest, masked man, for murder. On what authority? My own. Who else? I'm marshal of this town. Roy Dillon. You're who? Roy Dillon. Now turn over your guns. You're in trouble, mister. Real trouble. Riding into town with this cock and bull story about finding a body. I'll bet you're the one who's been murdering these Canucks all along. Come on, I got a nice, clean cell all swept out for you. Do you mind looking after my horse? Sure thing. We have lost all hope. We all go back to Canada. If you do, you lose everything. Your land, your homes. And my son. Etienne? Oui. When he heard you had murdered Papa Baptiste, he swore to get Lanson and Slauson himself. Do you believe I betrayed your trust? That I'm a murderer? No. For some reason, I do not. Mrs. Sharon, listen to me carefully. I'm being held here illegally. The man wearing that badge is not Marshal Dillon. Then he is working with them? There's no doubt of it. The real Marshal Dillon is my friend. I believe he was murdered on a trail to Vandalia. But what can I do? Go home. Persuade your son not to make this terrible mistake. Ask your people to wait just a little longer. Then there is still hope. There is still hope. We can't wait any longer. You stay here, Injun. Tell Ronson we've gone to the parachute place, then to Sharon's to buy him up. Ah, me tell him that. Let's go, Dylan. What you doing, engine? like Mr. Slauson say. Yeah? Now I know you. You're the engine that was with the masked man the first time I shot Batiste. Taking the law into your own hands? You warned me after you killed Papa Baptiste. I didn't kill Papa Baptiste. I was Papa Baptiste. Etienne, 
For your mother's sake, I want you to help me. Take your gun. Go on, take it. I'll do exactly as I tell you. I'm gonna give you one more chance, ain't you? See what that is. Hey, what were those shots? Hey! Two shots, they come at the right time? Perfect. Now help me get these two inside. Tom, I want you to find the land agent Burrow. Bring him to the Chiron place. Etienne, when your father was killed, was there a blank piece of paper in his pocket? Oui. It's just what I wanted to know. Dan Slauson will be here any minute to buy your ranch. I want you to sell it to him. Say it? But uh, I, I do not understand. You will. Write the bill of sale with this ink. Use no other. But I do not understand. Lawson and the phony marshal. I want you to do exactly as I told you. This ain't it. I, uh, I've always been a good friend to you, Canucks. That's why I'm buying up all your ranches, giving you a stake to go back to your homes in Canada. It is very kind of you, monsieur. Now, uh, how much would you take for your place, ma'am? Uh, how much were those cattle my husband stole? Oh, about uh, $500. Then that is what I will take. All right, ma'am, it's a deal. If you just uh, give us the deed. I do not have a real deed. I will write you, how you call it, a bill of sale. Mrs. Huron. Legal in any court. Now, here is your money. And bon voyage on your trip back to Canada. Bye, ma'am. You know, Dan, we control every last piece of property in this valley now. And with a new railroad company... Wait a minute. What's the matter? It's blank. She cheated us. Something is wrong, monsieur. Look at that. A blank piece of paper. That's right. Just like the bill of sale you gave her husband. And written with the same ink. The disappearing ink I found in your desk drawer. Now remove your gun belts. Real easy, like. All right, now, mister, drop your guns. She's going to be our safe conduct out of here. One move from you and she gets it. All right, come on, Dylan. Sale and disappearing ink. 
feeding makes the writing reappear. But, but how could he hope to get away with this? He was playing on a basic weakness of human nature, making everyone suspicious of those who speak in a foreign language, like you Canucks. Come. Okay. I, I owe you everything, my home, even my son. He's a good boy, now that he's learned to let the law do his fighting for him. Goodbye, Mrs. Charron. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur. He leaves, and I do not even know his name. I know it. He calls himself Le Chasseur Solitaire. The Lone Ranger. I am Silver! Away! Peaceful Valley. Five miles. Tano, from what I understand, the most populated part of Peaceful Valley is the graveyard. You may not want to add to overcrowded conditions, Kimasabe. Well, I can't understand it. Marshal Jim Wade has always kept a peaceful town. Something has happened lately. The outlaws have taken the valley over completely. Let's ride in and have a talk with Jim. Senor, and you won't get hurt. Hope for the safe, Senor. I can eat more venison than you can, Vince. Well, no, I'll bet you can't. I'll bet you two curries with the horses you can. Bet you three curries with the horses I can. All right, you're on. Land sake, the way you two see the meat, you think it was your last meal on earth. So I'll be sure you're the best cook in the world, Ma. Ain't you, Vince? Oh, she sure is, Jackie. Hey. And the prettiest, too. Gee, thank you. The way you carry on must make Buddy blush. It's more the mystery what you ever saw on me. A widow woman with a boy of her own. You could have had your pick of the prettiest gals in town. Well, no, I had to have somebody hustle my vittles and wash my socks. Besides, I got me a real fine boy out of the bargain, huh, Jackie? Well, you better eat faster than that. You're gonna get way behind. Aw, oh, Vince, tain't fair. You're bigger than me. Oh, well, no, I didn't make the bet, did I? Martha, looks like them horses are due for three mighty nice rub downs. Come here. Quiet. Vince, it's the bank. What about the bank? The false face gang. Gents. Hurry. Oh, I'll be right with you. Take care of him. Please take care of him. Don't you fret, Martha. We've been through this before. Everything will be all right. Jack, you look after your mom. Hello, Jackie. Remember me? Pretty good job you do, boy. You do all currying around here? No, nah, I just lost a bet to Vince. Bet him I could eat more than he could. I couldn't. Well, for goodness sakes, if it isn't the ranger in Tondo after all these years. Hello, Martha. Nice to see you again. Is Jim around? Oh, well, you ain't been around in a long time, ranger. Jim's been dead most two years now. Dead? Oh, I'm sorry. What happened? Oh. Good die young in Peaceful Valley Ranger. 
Jim stepped outside one night to quiet down some cowboys that was on a spree and shooting up the town, and one of them killed him. We never knowed who. <laughs> I guess you don't know about me being married again, then, either. No, ma'am. I want you to meet him, Ranger. I, I hope you'll be as good a friend to him as you were to Jim. Vince Barrett's his name. Vince Barrett? Went and married me another lawman. But he just don't never learn. Got my heart in my throat right now. He's out tracking down some bank robbers. Come on inside and, and sit down. I've got some coffee ready. Pie, too. It would taste good, Martha. How about it, Tarno? That right, Kima Savvy. Me remember your pies, ma'am. Hey, Tarno. Bitch, I can rub down this side for you can rub down the other. Bet you my piece pie you'll cast, boy. It's a bit. More coffee? Please, Martha. So this is the fifth robbery by the false face gang. Yes. And the ugly things folks around here are saying about Vince. That he's yellow. Or worse, that, that he's being paid off. It ain't true. He's doing the best he can. But how can he catch him? Nobody ever sees their faces. They might be your next door neighbor for all the body knows. What's Vince to do? How long you and Vince been married, ma'am? Most on a month now, Tonto. Vince came drifting into town after Jim died. Quite a spell after. Why he passed up all the pretty gals and took to court in me, I'll never know. Just plumb lost my head over him. Seems like he'd no more than been made marshal when his, his false face gang started up. The town pins a star and the first man that's got gumption enough to wear it makes him a target for every gunman in the country and then calls him yellow if he don't go right out and get killed. Ranger, you will help him catch these outlaws and, and clear his name, won't you? Don't you worry, Martha. We'll catch the false face gang, whoever they are. Five robberies in five weeks, Vince. What have you done about it? Not one blame thing. This last robbery has almost completely wiped out the bank. We've had to close our doors. You realize what this means to a town, Vince? Money in a bank is not just money. It's winter feed for stock. It's seed for spring planting. We've arranged to have reserve funds brought in on tomorrow morning's stage. If this money doesn't arrive, there won't be any bank. We'll have to close our doors for good. Vince, just this once. Can we rely on you to protect the stage? Lies, I never asked for this star in the first place. I ain't asking for it now. You just pin it on somebody else. Wait a minute, Vince. I didn't say that. You know we can't get another marshal in time to save the stage. We won't have to, Elias. Where we, Vince? Pin it back on. Stop it, Rennick. Pin it back on. That's better. Before I forget it, I'm having a party out at the Circle R tonight. And I want you all to be there. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Rennick was a tune and really put badge on again. Why? Tyler, if we knew the words of that song, we might know. It could be a clue to the whole case. Got to get to Rennick. Jim had a big party tonight. Maybe if we go to that party. It's a good idea. We'll use the Mexican disguise. And that's exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> now may I please be excused? <laughs> Why, hello, Martha. Lies. Hi. Vince. Having a good time? A very good time, Mr. Vince. <laughs> Jackie boy. <laughs> Senor Rennick, my friend and I are grateful for giving us job tonight. We have no work, no dinero for many weeks. It's all right. Only this afternoon I hear you whistle a little tune in the jailhouse. It is a song my mother used to sing to me when I am little muchacho. Your mother? It's an Irish tune. But, senor, my mother, she is Irish. 
You know the words, senor? I don't know what words your mother sang to you, but the words I know are made up myself. I'm kind of a poet. You tell us the words, senor? Sure. I'll tell them to you. Three crazy cowpokes rode into town. And with their big six guns, they shot a man down. The names of the first two, I can't give you since. I'm a shield a third cowpoke whose name rhymes with quince. Or he married the wife of the man he had slain to ease his own conscience and gentle her pain. <laughs> Rennick. Never mind, Martha. I had my reasons. Come on, Jackie. Pat your bedtime. Senor! What are you doing here? We'll ask the questions, Vince. Who are you? That's not a Mexican accent. Uh, these accents, uh, it's come on or off whenever we want it to. Didn't Martha tell you she asked us to help? The Ranger. And Tonto. That's right, Vince. And you were there at Rennick's party. You heard the little piece he spoke. Every word of it. And you know. We know that you're the cowboy who rode into town that night and killed Jim Wade. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon I was. And all the time, your wife, she not know about us? No, no, of course not. Now I suppose you'll have to tell her. Suppose you tell us first. Yeah, I reckon I might as well spell it. Been carrying it around inside of me too long already. Bart Rennick, Joe Butler, and me was the three cowboys rode into town that night. Just having fun, shooting off our guns to scare folks. But well, it was dark. Ranger, I didn't even see the marshal. I didn't even know he'd been shot until afterwards. Bart and Job told me about it. Then you admit you shot him? Shot with a 44. Bart and Job carried 45s, but I had a 44. Go on, Vince. Well, when I found out what I'd done, I was sick, naturally. I aimed to turn myself in. Then I found out nobody would really seen our faces. It was too dark. Nobody knew that I'd done it. Nobody but you and your friends. That's plenty to share bad secrets. What do you do about it? What could I do? I couldn't give Martha back the husband I'd taken away from her. I couldn't give Jackie's pa back to her. But I could do the next best thing. I could take care of them, make sure they never wanted for nothing. I'd be the best part I could to Jackie. That's why I come back, Ranger, and, and ask Martha to marry me. But somehow, I never could tell her the truth. And Rennick, him hold information over your head. Yeah. Why, Vince? Is Rennick the leader of the False Face Gang? How'd you know that? I didn't until now. And you protect him and his gang all this time? Bart was going to tell Martha the lyrics to that song. Ranger, how could I let her find out that I killed Jim Wade, loving her like I do? She has to know sooner or later. It better her find out from you, Vince. Tano's right. You're going in there and tell her right now. Then you're going to turn in your star and face the music for killing Jim Wade. You let me do one thing first? What's that? The stage is coming through tomorrow, carrying the bank's reserve funds. Rennick and his gang plan to hit it up in the pass where it'll be easy to stop. Are you sure? Yeah, of course I am. I've already got my orders. And to be elsewhere as usual. Ranger, I'm asking you this. Tomorrow morning, you let me keep this star for just one hour, just long enough to get him. You're asking a lot, Vince. You're asking that we trust you. Why should we? Because I want to do just one decent thing for Martha and Jackie to remember me by. Me think that good idea, Kimisabe. All right. Tomorrow morning, one hour. But afterwards, you're going to afterwards, turn your... Afterwards, I'll do anything you say. Even if it does mean going to prison. Uh, you go tell Martha now? She has the right to know, Vince. Well, that's, that's it, Martha. That's the whole story. I killed Jim Wade. I'd give anything to make it not true. I had to tell you, Martha, before you found out from somebody else. I know you're saying I'm, I'm sorry. I wouldn't do no good. I guess all I can do is just 
He's not bothering no more. I, I'm leaving, Darcy, but I'm not running away. I'm through with him. I've got one more job to do, and then the Ranger and I will ride over to the Capitol, and I'll turn myself in. I reckon I'll be glad to get the shooting cleared up after all this time. <laughs> Miss Abby, we take quite a big chance when we let Vince Barrett keep his star. No, no, I couldn't refuse him. He seemed so sincere when he wanted to do one last decent thing before giving himself up. Suppose him tell Rennick about ambush tomorrow. I thought about that. Worried about it, too, before giving him his chance. And still, you give him chance? Well, I had to. For Martha and Jackie's sake. Don't forget, he didn't have a criminal record. The shooting of Jim Wade was an accident. That's right, Kim Sonny. It was accident. The man does something wrong, and he doesn't admit it. The longer he hides it, the worse it becomes. But then he make mistake when he not confess right away to what him do. Vince found out what he had done. He came back to look after Martha and Jackie. Then when he realized he was in love with her, he couldn't confess for fear of losing her. Tano, that's only human. That's right, Kim Sonny. We get some sleep now? Right. We have a big day tomorrow. I hope Vince doesn't let us down. Good night, Tonto. I reckon you men know what this is all about. Small space gang aims to hit the stage up in the pass. But this time they're due for a surprise. You ready, Ranger? Vince. Martha. Honey, what? I love Jim Vince. But I love you, too. You say you didn't mean to do it, that you didn't even know you'd done it. I believe you. Martha. Whatever it is, Vince, we're in this together. Even if you have to go to prison, I'll wait for you. I I loved you all this time. I never, never really knew you. Since I asked only one thing. You know what will happen when Rennick finds out you turned on him. He'll kill you. I've lost one man, Vince. I, I, I couldn't bear to lose another. Don't go with the posse. Honey, I'm still wearing this star. That makes me marshal for one more hour. I've got to go. Turn in your star, Vince. Anything, but don't go. No, Martha, no. If you can't think of yourself or, or of me, think of Jackie. He needs you, Vince. He needs you. You're all he's got. Look, I love Jackie every bit as much as you do. But I've gone down this road with running as far as I can go, as far as any man can go, and I ain't going no further. Martha, this is one thing Vince has to do for himself. As well as for you and Jackie. Ben. Ben. Let's go. Get the gold chest. Sure. Now, get the two prisoners. We can hold them off until dark, we'll be all right. 
Hold your fire. Here comes Island Joe. Drop your guns. You've worn that false face for the last time. Come on, we join Sheriff Harkin. Jim Wade wasn't killed by any 44. This? I was lying to you all the time. Lying. <laughs> Jim was killed with a 45. 45? Yeah. And you killed him. That's you were right. carrying a 45. That's right, I killed him, Jim. I always meant to tell you different. I couldn't get around to it. So I still got the last laugh on you, Vince. <laughs> right to the end. Hey. Oh, good. 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 Oh, I reckon now that the townspeople know about me, they'll, they'll be wanting this back. I think not, Vince. All the money stolen by Rennick and his false face gang has been recovered and restored to its rightful owner. I've talked it over with the townspeople. They're satisfied, and so am I. And from now on, we'll have a marshal we can really trust. I shine pop star for him, Mr. Rush. Don't it shine pretty? Sure does, Jackie. My work is finished here, Donald. Oh, wait. Didn't even get a chance to thank them. By the way, you never did tell me. Who is that masked man? Huh. You ain't never been in trouble before, Elias. Because if you had, you wouldn't need to ask. You'd know. That's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? I'll Silver! Looks like owner of this ranch not very friendly toward Indians. That worries me, Tuttle. Chief Flying Cloud of the Mescaleros and the Sun White Eagle are due at Fort Carson tomorrow to sign a new peace treaty with our government. In order to get there in time, they have to cut across this whole spread. It's too big to go around. The reason for the journey well known, Kimasabi. No one have cars to stop them. No one? I hope you're right. We'd better make sure. my son. We are too exposed here, my father. They will pick us off easily. If only I could explain to them the purpose of our mission. All right, boys. You know what Miss Aggie says about redskins. The only good one's a dead one. With another Indian. We're outnumbered. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Miss Aggie, I want to know about this. Providence has spared our lives, my son. Providence comes dressed as a masked man, I see. But I do not recognize the Indian with him. He's no member of our tribe. Welcome, my brothers. You have earned the gratitude of all the Mescaleros. They will not forget. Your chief flying cloud? And my son, White Eagle. Uh, the men who ambush you, them not know you crossed this property on mission of peace? If they did, they pretended not to. They started shooting before they asked any questions. We would not have trespassed, but if we are late for our meeting at Fort Carson, we will be accused of bad faith. You're right, Chief Flying Cloud. It's essential that you and your son continue on your way. But what about men who attack them, Kimasabi? Then maybe try again. Let's pick up their trail and see where it leads. Perhaps we can find out what lay behind this attack. Adios. Wait! Do not think me superstitious, my brothers, but 
Perhaps you will accept this as an omen of good fortune. It may help you. This gold coin is old and rare. Where did you get it? It is one of several I used to play with as a child. My mother gave it to me before she died. She used to tell me stories about it, how each had a spell of magic to it and would protect its wearer from harm. Perhaps it will do the same for you. Thank you, White Cloud. But I don't believe in superstitions. But I'll carry this coin as a gift of friendship. friendly signs. Beware hangman's tree for Indians. I don't usually tamper with other people's property. But this is one time I think I should. You may not understand, Kimisabi, how one person can have a grudge against so many. I don't know, Tano, but I intend to find out. The person who posts that sign not know all Indians. Some good and some bad, just like white people. You're right. When a person is filled with hate, they don't reason clearly. I think you'd better turn back and let me go on. You're in greater danger here than I am. No, Kimisabi. If my people face death because owner of this property have hate for them, then we have right to learn why and try to change things. Let me ride with you. Let's go. Tracks lead here, Kimisabi. We go in? Yes, Tonto. We must find out why those Indians were attacked on a mission of peace. But keep your eyes open. Hold it right there, or I'll put the next one right between your eyes. Now drop your guns real easy, like. Get off your horses and don't try anything funny. You saw the sign at the gate. What are you doing here? We'd like to talk to the owner of this property. Miss Aggie talks to no strangers, least of all a redskin and a masked man. You're the same men who ambushed those Indians a while back, aren't you? That's right. They were trespassing on private property, just like you're doing. That not give you right to try and kill them. Our orders are to run trespassers off this property. Yeah, especially Indians. And that's just what we aim to do as soon as I get a look at your face. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Who's going to stop me? I am? Sure, you can take this mask off me with a gun in your hand and help from those other two men. But can you do it without them? What are you getting at? I'm challenging you to a fair fight. No guns. Just the two of us with our fists. If you win, this mask comes off. But if I win, the both of us go free. We get to talk to the owner of this property. Ha! You're digging your own grave, mister. Don't you know who this is? Samson O'Hara. And they call him that because he's the strongest man in this territory. Ain't nobody ever licked him. There's a first time for everything. Mister, you made yourself a deal. No guns, just fists. And when I get through with you, you won't be fit for burial. <laughs> Watch him, boss. He's shifty. Now you got him. Break him in half. He beat you, boss. I didn't think anybody could beat you. Now I'd like to talk to the owner of this property. You ain't talking to no one. Keep your guns on him. Is that the way you keep your word? Never mind my word. I'm going to get that mask off your face. Samson! I heard the bargain you made with him. Now you'll live up to it. He beat you fair and square. But Miss Aggie, they were trespassing. They're the ones who saved those two Indians a while back. I know. And I hate Indians just as much as you do. 
But I won't have a foreman of mine going back on his word. You wanted to see me? Come in. Thank you, Mrs. Turner. I'm glad someone around here has a sense of honor. Well? There's plenty fine room, Kimisabe. We not see many like it. You're lucky to be seeing it at all, Indian. You're the first redskin ever set foot in this house since the day I built it. And I hope you'll be the last. Now, what do you want here? Mrs. Turner, did you leave orders for your men to kill everyone who may venture on your property? Not everyone. Just Indians. Like him. Why you hate Indians so? Why shouldn't I hate them? They killed my husband and my son. What happened, Mrs. Turner? Twenty years ago, slaughtered in cold blood. I had that picture made from a tintype. My little boy was just six years old. A plenty bad thing that happened to you. Are you sure Indians do it? Sure. I'll never forget those renegade Apaches as long as I live. Or the way it happened. The three of us headed west along a wagon trail, planning to settle out here and start a new life. Me and my husband, Ben, and my little boy, Chip. Ben was just busting with excitement at all he saw. The wild, rugged country, a challenge, and a promise to anyone who could tame it. We'd make out just great here, Ben was saying. We'd find a level spread, clear it, make the land give up its wealth. And one day it would all belong to Chip. Ben was so proud of Chip. He had such big plans for him. There was a stream real close by. Ben set Chip to fill our canteen with water. And then, suddenly from out of nowhere, the arrow came. I don't know how many Indians there were. I just had time to see two of them. I grabbed for Ben's gun, but I was no match for them. I came to again, my husband's dead body was lying beside me. And there was no sign of my little boy. Just his jacket, all torn and dirty. I called and called to him. But he was gone. Gone forever. I spent months and months looking for him. Finally, I... I gave up hope. I knew my little boy was dead. That's when I made up my mind to carry on as my husband would have done if he were here. To build a fortune that he was going to build. And to spend the rest of my life making the Redskins pay for what they had done. You suffer terrible tragedy, Mrs. Turner. You understand how you feel. But what good it do to blame all Indians for crime of few? To me, you're all guilty. All of you. Surely your husband and son wouldn't have wanted you to spend your whole life seeking vengeance. How do you know what they would have wanted? They've been dead 20 years. That's true of your husband. But what about boy? You not have proof of his death. Indy and I prayed my heart out he'd come back alive. But you can't live on hope forever. I stopped believing in miracles years ago. You're wrong, Mrs. Turner. There's always hope. And sometimes miracles do happen. I've had enough of this. Get off my property and stay off. And the next time I catch you and your Indian friend trespassing, you won't leave here alive. And remember, don't come back. Miss Aggie. What is it? Those two Indians we tried to get rid of this morning, they're still on your property. One of the boys just saw them. You fools. You mean that after you saved their lives, you didn't have sense enough to get them off my land? It is very important them get to Fort Carson as soon as possible. You want us to go after them again, Miss Aggie? We can pick them off easy when they ride through Rock Canyon. Yes, but this time, don't bungle the job. They've had fair warning. No, Mrs. Turner. What you're ordering is murder, pure and simple. Exactly. Just what those Apaches did to my husband and my son. Two wrongs not make a right. If you take law into your own hands, you maybe get hurt worst of all. He's right, Mrs. Turner. You know what the Bible says. Those who sow the wind reap the whirlwind. I've had enough of your mealy mouth sermons. 
Go finish your job. But first, tie up these two. I don't want them interfering anymore. Mrs. Turner, won't you change your mind before it's too late? Certainly you don't want murder on your conscience. You worry about your conscience. I'll take care of mine. Somehow I don't believe you're as tough as you pretend to be. Anyone who loved their family as much as you did certainly can't be bad. You must have to work mighty hard to keep your hate burning so strongly. It's easy to keep my hate alive. All I have to do is to look at the things in this cabinet. Everything I could salvage from our wrecked wagon. Reminders of my little boy and what happened to him and who did it. The jacket he was wearing when they ambushed us. The canteen he was carrying. The toy soldiers he called his army. And this gold coin, one of the two he used to play with. Not much to show, is it, poor little boy? He's been dead 20 years. Mrs. Turner, that gold coin and the other ones, did you tell him stories about them? Of course. All little children like to hear stories. But did you tell him that if he always carried the gold coins with him, that they would protect him from harm? That's right. I made it up, of course, but he liked hearing it and... How did you know I used to tell him that story? Because he told me, just this morning when I met him. When... when you met him? What are you saying? Him say your son not dead. Boy, he's still living. You're lying! Did he tell you his mother told him that story? That's right, when she gave him gold coins to play with. Mrs. Turner, you said you stopped believing in miracles. What do you say now? Where is he? In one of the two Indians you send your men out to kill. No, they, they're Mescaleros. It was Apaches who attacked us. Mrs. Turner, the boy is your son. No, no, you're tricking me. I know you are, he's dead. You'll find a coin in my left glove. He gave it to me while he was telling me the childhood story that you told him. They're identical. Now do you believe me? Merciful heavens, I've sent them out to kill my own boy. There still may be time to stop them. And time me as fast as you can. But they have such a head start. How can you catch them? Our horses are faster than theirs. Oh, we'll do our best. Beg if you get there in time. I'll follow as quickly as I can. I sowed the wind. And I've reaped the whirlwind. Forgive me. Here they come. Get ready. Now, when I give the signal, let them have it. That is twice you have saved our lives, my brothers. We almost didn't make it this time. O'Hara! Can you hear me? I can hear you, masked man. We are shut here by Miss Aggie. She wants you to call off the ambush. <laughs> You don't expect me to believe that, do you? I'm telling you the truth, O'Hara. This Indian boy is Miss Aggie's own son. Save your breath. Ain't none of you gonna leave this canyon alive. Not you or the Indians. That story you told them about me, was it a lie? No, White Eagle. It was the truth. You have always known you were not truly of my blood, my son. Yes, my father. But when you rescued me from the Apaches, I thought my mother was dead. I saw them strike her down. Your mother, plenty strong woman, she refused to die. That's right, White Eagle. What gave her the courage to go on was the hope of finding you. Them have us pinned down here plenty good, Kimizami. If we don't get out of here, they'll be able to pick us off one by one. You two keep firing. Hold their attention. We'll circle around and get them up. <laughs> I'm going to edge over and see if I can't flush him out. Keep him busy.
Mr. Turner, I'd like you to meet your son. It's so hard to believe. All these years, I, I thought you were dead. And I thought you were dead, because I lacked faith. What do you think of Indians now, Mrs. Turner? I feel so ashamed. Hitting your people all these years when I should have been grateful to them for rescuing Chip from those renegades. Well, White Eagle, or should I call you Chip? What are you going to do now? Stay with your mother or go on with your adopted father? I belong to them both now. I will seek to be part of both their lives. That's a good answer. Well, Tyler, our work is finished here. Adios, my friends. He gave me back my son, and I don't even know his name. His is a name which brings honor to whites and Indians alike. A name which seeks justice for all. The Lone Ranger. Thank you.